I'll kick off um, uh, the, uh, the formal proceedings uh, and briefly introduce um, Danny Alexander, the Chief Secretary to the Treasury. So Danny is, as many of you know, the member of the Cabinet who is responsible for a number of things, including um, public expenditure um, right across the piece, but also um, is taking leadership within the Cabinet on infrastructure matters uh, chairs the recently formed Cabinet Committee, um, which is there to drive forward the programme that we're going to be talking about today. Um, Danny, um, please come up and, and um, uh, kick the day off. Thank you very much indeed, James, and it gives me very great pleasure to be here this morning to open this breakfast meeting on uh, infrastructure. Uh, apologize, I apologize for my voice this morning. I was in the uh, velodrome last night cheering on the British cyclists. <laughs> and I was obviously shouting a bit too loudly for the good of my speech this morning. Though it was wonderful to be at the Olympic Park, which is such a fantastic example of many of the things that we are uh, talking about uh, this morning. Um, to kick off this meeting, I want to say a few general words on how government policy supports investment in infrastructure and how that investment in turn we see as a key part of supporting our objective of a strong and balanced economic recovery for the United Kingdom. <clears throat> of course, I don't need to remind any of you of the difficult economic times that we face uh, and I know that times are particularly tough for some of the businesses represented here. The UK, of course, is still recovering from the biggest debt and financial crisis of our lifetimes and a recovery that is made no easier by the ongoing challenges uh, around the world, in the euro area, and in our banking system. But in the midst of these sobering facts, we should not lose sight of the many positives for the UK. Employment up by 181,000 in the last quarter, 840,000 private sector jobs created since we came to power in 2010, inflation down to 2.4% in June. These successes come in a very challenging climate, and though we still have an enormous amount to do, they support our view that the government is following the right economic strategy for the United Kingdom. Our objective is to return this country to sustainable prosperity and to rebalance our economy. It means a number of things. Firstly, it means fiscal consolidation, to sort out our public finances and ensure the UK commands confidence as it does in the international markets. It means supply-side reform, ensuring Britain is an excellent place to do business and raising our medium-term growth potential. And it means dealing with those long-standing weaknesses that we have, for example, delivering a more mobile workforce with the right skills in the right places. And infrastructure is critical to this, and particularly the latter two of those objectives. And through taking tough choices on government spending, and as James said, I'm responsible for public spending in this country, uh, we are actually have enabled ourselves to invest more money, more government capital, in transport infrastructure and in broadband access and quality than at the height of the spending boom in this country. And at the same time, the credibility that we've established has given the Bank of England space to keep the base rate low and provide further monetary support for investment, such as quantitative easing and the new funding for lending scheme which came into operation last week. And it has allowed us to support further infrastructure investment directly. For example, through the UK Guarantees Scheme that we announced a fortnight ago. This will help to accelerate major infrastructure investment by offering guarantees for up to £40 billion of major infrastructure projects and a temporary lending programme that will allow around £6 billion of public-private partnerships to proceed without delay in the next 12 months. Already we have had around 30 expressions of interest since that announcement and we continue to receive more on a daily basis. The Treasury's door is open to discussions with any project that meets our criteria, projects that are nationally significant, that are financially credible, good value for the taxpayer, that need a guarantee to get underway now and are ready to start within a year. 
and we will deal with any applications and expressions of interest as quickly as possible. And I can tell you this morning that the Green Deal will be an early candidate for the use of these guarantees. The Green Deal is the largest ever program in this country for investing in the energy efficiency of our housing stock. And we are looking at whether and how a guarantee could ensure that the finances are in place to get that program off to a strong start. And the deals that my colleagues will be announcing later today show the UK is already in a strong position. And the work we are doing is building on that to strengthen it further still. Alongside these measures to support infrastructure investment and investment finance, we are also taking major steps to remove non-financial barriers to investment, reforming our planning regulations, identifying skills gaps and capability issues. And to ensure that Britain's infrastructure is delivering on our priorities, our National Infrastructure Plan, which will be set out in more detail to you later this morning, sets out a clear vision for the £250 billion of investment that we expect to 2015 and beyond. Our updated plan brings together a comprehensive cross-sectoral analysis of the UK's infrastructure networks and sets out clear long-term ambitions for improving performance in each sector. And our newly established cabinet committee, which I chair, will ensure that this plan is delivered, focusing on the top 40 growth projects identified in the plan. And we've made real progress in the first few months of that committee's work in removing barriers to investment, working with industry, for example, to resolve radar interference issues affecting four gigawatts of wind energy developments and supporting the development of a new pension infrastructure platform, which will make the first wave of its initial £2 billion investment in UK infrastructure by early 2013. In every area of infrastructure development, roads, railways, renewables, broadband, energy networks, we have huge ambitions and we are putting, place, putting in place the regulatory frameworks to match. Now, the scale of the challenges that we face as a country makes delivering on our hugely ambitious infrastructure agenda all the more essential. We want to work together with all of you to make that happen by removing barriers to project delivery and creating a supportive environment for long-term investment in infrastructure. Today's conversation is a very important staging post in making that happen. Thank you very much for listening.